Now just a little warning before we begin, there will be major spoilers in this video for Fantastic Beasts and the Secrets of Dumbledore? No, Fantastic Beasts and where to find them, the okay. Secrets of Dumbledore. That's what it is. So if you haven't seen it yet, you don't want anything ruined, you know what to do. Come back after you have seen it. Okay, well, what did you think of this movie? I... As, a, as a Harry Potter fan, let, let's get, we'll establish that first. You are, you've read all the books, you oh, are, them, yeah. you are a pretty big Harry Potter fan. Mm -hmm. I know the movies, enjoy the movies, never read the books. I know I get people all the time tell me I should read them, and we will try to fix that someday. But mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a movie, yeah, Harry Potter's cool, I like it, but not really huge fan. So what did you're you lost, think of the man, movie? Out of the three, this is definitely above the second one for me. I can agree with that. Yeah. It may be one of my... I, I might like this more than the first one. I like how... It seemed pretty respectful of the lore of, for Harry Potter. Yeah, we call it lore there, too. That's fine. <laughs> but yeah, it seemed pretty respectful of the lore. It expanded on stuff without diminishing them. Like, I've told you the story of the Dumbledore family, and nothing they did in this movie, I don't feel, took away from that story or changed that story to an extent that it would damage its material. Well, yeah, I mean, I didn't... I was confused at the end of the second movie when, no, there is another Dumbledore, you know, kind of... Well, he made it sound like he was a brother. Yeah, he did, which didn't make any sense because the, the two are pretty old. Not old, but I mean, you know, they're not young men like he is, clearly. Like, uh... Well, and if any... And like, I'm like, how would he be a brother that they didn't know about because their mother died... I'm still not sure how the baby was on the ship and what was all that and the because... switching of the babies from the last movie. I'm confused by that. Okay. There's a lot of things in this movie that I don't want to say confused me because I don't want to sound, you know, like I don't understand. But there are a lot of things in this movie that I'm like, what is, sometimes I'm like, what is going on right now? Well, it now? sounded like Aberforth had a, uh, he was he was in love and for some reason they split apart. I, they kind of, sometimes the movies and the sound quality wasn't the greatest in yeah. the theater today? I don't know. I don't know if that's our theater or the movie, yeah. Probably the movie. Sometimes I got really quiet and I was like, what did they say? So he was in love with a girl. She ended up leaving. She had she had to leave. There was the baby, which got switched on the boat. And she, the mother, you know, died. He would have assumed that if there was a child that it was dead. I guess, yeah. But, bec but it actually was the Lestrange child who died. And Credence, who obviously lived yeah. and was raised by the horrible woman. Yeah. Yeah, in yes. the um, orphanage or whatever that was in the first movie. That horrible. The, the little witch people. Yeah, whatever. Anti yeah, the anti-witch people. people, yeah. I, I think... New Salem or something. I think what I... Because I, I, I don't know. Like, I really like the Harry Potter movies. And I think one of the biggest differences... The, the two biggest differences I can think of between these films and the Harry Potter films is the Harry Potter films, for one, they feel more fun. There's, a, there's just this different... To this all everything here, yeah, you still have like the same cool magical things, but everything feels so grim and dark all the time. Because and it's it's the kids are in a in a protected, sheltered environment. Yeah, and I, magic is wondrous and new. I get yeah, this I, is adults. I get where that. The real I think that exists. yeah. I, I part of me I, I like the fact that it's a more mm -hmm. adult Harry Potter, if you will. But I, I think I miss that just kind of the wondrous feeling. It doesn't feel wondrous in this. That's why like, Newt is there. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, he he. I I think you know. Redmond, what's his name? Eric? Eddie. Eddie Redmond. I was going to call him Eric Redmond. I think he does. I, I like the character oh, of Newt. He's fantastic. Yeah, I, I think he's a great actor. I love Newt. He's probably my favorite character in these films. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he's the only one that really had everything else is just, oh, it, it's mundane magic for everybody else, which is, you know, if you watch the Harry Potter movies, Harry's always like amazed by everything. And you're, you know, he's the everyman in those films, obviously, mm -hmm. or the books. And so you're always kind of experiencing things through him. And I think that makes it more fun and exciting and wondrous and right. this completely misses that that's because in his situation you are following a character who's only known muggle world muggle life yeah. into a world of new and magic and wonder where everything really is new he's our every man who is our hero at the same yeah. time you know well yeah every man in this one we are acknowledging that 
this is a magical world. They do this day to day. It's not exactly a I fancy know. thing. It's like using the vacuum cleaner. I know. And it, it's it's kind of strange to me because it's, you know, like I said, that's one of the things I liked about the Harry Potter is you would see the magic and then, you know, you'd usually have Hermione kind of explaining it to Harry or <laughs> even to Ron sometimes. And, you know, it, that, that duo worked so well because you had the really smart Hermione. You had the, I don't know what's going on, Harry. And then you had the more doofus, I guess we can say, Ron. And that, that trio just works well for what those films or those, I'm assuming the books are. And I think another problem I have with these films is, again, kind of comparing them to the Harry Potter movies, they all had like a really self-contained story, at least most of them to, to the later films, kind of, you know, like the Goblet of Fire. There was there was an actual story, you know, that we were following that also happened to be attached to the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas these films, it just feels like it's just the next chapter of a big... Uh, like, if I had to tell you what the plot of this movie was, I... I would have a really hard time because I'm not entirely sure what the what this actual movie was about, other than continuing this story. It, it feels more like a, a move, uh, not a movie, a TV series, right? Where you don't really have necessarily a plot mm -hmm. in every single episode. How sometimes they're just kind of a continuation, and that's kind of. And now I'm left wondering how many of these are we gonna do before we kind of wrap this up? Well, they theoretically they could be done now. That's kind of what I thought. We don't I, need to see the duel between. Grindelwald yeah. and Dumbledore, because we already know who wins. Well, sure. I mean, Harry read it on a chocolate frog in like the first movie. That <laughs> spoiler alert. One of the Harry. things that that Dumbledore is known for is his defeat of the Dark Wizard Grindelwald. Sure. So we know how this ends. God, the dynamic though between those two was magic. Yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, I, I like the switch. Fantastic actor, and so was Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah, fantastic. I like the switch. For, I like Mads Mikkelsen. I, I, I was curious if they're going to explain it at all, like why he looks didn't. different. No, I agree, it's better. I mean, they're wizards who can make up all kinds of excuses. I'm sure, but I liked Mads Mikkelsen better than Johnny Depp. He took some of that crazy energy out of it. Yeah, I think, and turned into a calculating person who really, I believe, could. Sway there was more, the yeah, I actually felt more heart in this Grindelwald than I did in the Johnny Depp. The Johnny Depp one, every time I see Johnny Depp now, I unfortunately see Pirates of the Caribbean. I see Captain Jack Sparrow kind of thing. And he kind of carries that into every yeah. character I feel like he's done since then. He, he has that showboat attitude and yeah. stuff. He's very over the top a lot of times. But yes. Grindelwald is the everyman. He's, he's fighting for your rights. You know, he's that person. Well, that also felt weird to me in this movie. How it's like the the deer thing. I forget what they call it already. That would bow to the right person. The chillin? The chillin, yes. You know, chillin' like a I villain. Like a little chillin'. But, no, it's not that I didn't like that or that I didn't like the concept. But it, it's kind of funny. Like, oh, the chillin' is going to ball. ball? <laughs> he's going to bow before... You know, Grindelwald, and all of a sudden everybody's firing off their rooms. Yay, let's go to war. Let's kill all the muggles. Yay, woo. Well, there were people and in then, the crowds that were doing hey, that, yeah. And then as soon Plans. as it's like, as soon as like, now let's go bow before someone else. Everybody's like, hey, now we're not going to go kill the muggles. I found that a little strange. You know, yes, see, Kylo found it strange too. He's going to tear up your chair and let you know about it. But no, I mean, that that was a little odd. It's like one minute we're like, yeah, let's, we're going to follow this crazy guy who we kind of pardoned. Or just now he didn't actually have... Well, do these things? We didn't have any evidence or proof, and part now of it's he's because be... of the the, the chillin'. It has that much sway no, in the magical community. I certainly get that. My my point is like, it almost has too much sway. Where you're like, you're putting all your faith in this creature to like pick this guy that I think most people know. I mean, the guy, the people who support him realize he's for war with the Muggles. Those who don't, pretty much realize he's war with the Muggles, and that you know he's not a really good guy. And there he seems to get off on a technicality. And it's like we go from. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna support this guy. He's our new president or whatever, minister of magic. I'm sorry, I'm not. I don't remember all the terms, but you know, hey, we're all good with that. We're all fine. We're gonna support that decision because the deer bowed before him. But then it's like five minutes later. No, the deer. This is the real deer, and this is the one we're supposed to pick. Yay! Now we're picking that one. I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting that look. Like, boy, why do you have to bring these things up? I find that a little strange. I like the concept of some kind of animal that can detect the purity or the goodness i think that's cool but the fact that you were like not gonna question that maybe something's up that he's bowing before grindelwald you're just gonna be like yeah clearly he's a good dude all that all those rumors about him killing people and wanting to start a war even though two minutes after he's crowned prince he's gonna start the war i don't know well there was nothing to dispute the chillin picking him because at that time there they didn't realize there was it was pretty much a zombie 
Uh, a zombie I really, chilling, yeah. I really did love when it bowed in front of Dumbledore. I I thought that was a good moment. I thought that was cool, yes. Well, one thing and I knew I could see that coming a mile away, but I thought it was still good, even though that was kind of predictable. Well, one thing it does for me as a, as a book fan is they talk about how Dumbledore was approached by the Ministry so many times about being, you know, their, the head, and he always turned him down. Well, it makes sense if the whole Wizarding World saw he was chosen by the Chillin yeah. to lead the entire world's magical community. That they, of course, would keep pestering him to be like, hey, hey we, we know you've got a pure heart. Yeah. I was like, maybe the deer picked Grindelwald because he sensed he's pure evil. He got but confused. no, it was, they, they choose goodness. They choose, yeah. in their, I suppose they're infallible unless they're already dead, I guess. Yeah, well, not clearly not completely infallible. Well, it's, it was be. already dead. I know, I know. I'm just, I, like I said, I, I don't dislike the movie. It, it's one of those things where I, I think I really like the Harry Potter movies, mm-hmm. and these are kind of just a different beast, quote uh-huh. on, pun intended there, entirely. And it's not the same, and it just comes off feeling very... It's not like, you know, like the Star Wars original trilogy to the prequels where I still get that same kind of feeling of Star Wars. I get a... This just feels like a different franchise to me. Even though we have some of the same characters and we have all the same ideas, it just feels very disconnected to me. Maybe that's a good thing. I mean, they're set in different time periods. Sure, and certainly. I do you like that we had a conclusion to Credence's story? Kind of a strange... I don't... I never really understood him either. Like, why is he... I have a lot of hard time figuring out motivations with these characters. I don't know why that is. I don't know if I'm just not getting into it enough, or I don't understand the lore enough, or... Like, what, what were you something... having trouble with with his motivations? Well, I don't know. It's like one minute... Like, like in the first film, he's kind of just this loner kid, and now we he's like with Grindelwald and he he's with him but he's not with him and he's questioning him and I don't I like I said I don't really ever know what he wants other than to be loved I think that is pretty much it yeah he wants love and acceptance and family yeah but like in the, the last movie he's like oh, I'm all angry and I'm blowing up mountains and now he's like I, I didn't really see him do much in this movie I guess other than faced Dumbledore that one time and I don't know again well we do it's kind of still continue to see his progression. We know what's happening to him. And he gets that closure of realizing that his family is there and they didn't abandon him on purpose. They're, cl- you know, closing that deep wound in him, which is important to do. My biggest qualm with Credence's story is how in the world were he and Alberforth communicating? They're communicating through the mirror, but how did they, how did they do that? How did they know to do that? Magic? Sorry. No, I'm just saying that that feels like a story gap. I mean, he didn't... How did he... He knew he was a Dumbledore, so he somehow knew he could contact him with a mirror and talk I to Alberforth? I was confused about who was the... Like, the first time I saw a message in the mirror, I wasn't at all putting two and two... I'm like, what is this? I want to go home or whatever. I didn't... Yeah, I, I want to come home. Yeah, like, how did they know each other? How Forgive did, me. I don't... I was re- really... Like I said, there were, there were times in this film I felt like, did I miss something? Or am I not understanding it? And that, that was one of the examples. Like, how did they, like, how did they know each other? How did he know him suddenly? It's, and Yeah, see, we're missing a piece of story, and that's yeah. what bothers me. Well, good. Then I feel we a little bit better, because these were the things that confused me. <laughs> are missing the story of Nagini now. Oh, yeah, she that disappeared. Which that bothered me, too. No, she was with them at the end of this of the she? second movie. Yeah. At the, no, after, at the end of the second movie. At the end but of where the second was she movie. this movie? She, nowhere. Nowhere. She was just completely gone. Just like, where the heck was Tina? Yeah, Tina shows up at the end. And, and that wasn't right. I that think... wasn't a human. Well, you know what I mean. What? It was a digital <laughs> rendition. It was CGI. It didn't I thought even, this was some weird magic stuff. Like, oh, so that wasn't the real Tina? It didn't look like her. It was somebody in disguise. It wasn't right. right. If you're not going to put Tina in the movie, don't put Tina in the movie. I guess, you know? yeah. Just have them. I know it sounds callous, but you could break them up or just not put her in there. You didn't have to. I... Instead, it was an awkward-looking CGI. Like, and I never for a second, I'm looking at them like, oof, oof, that doesn't look like Tina to me. It looked really weird. And if I didn't even notice, to be honest with you. Now you've uh, got me wondering what, what i believing, if anything, was real in this film. No. I'm kidding, no. <laughs> I felt sad for Dumbledore, you know, he's so melancholy at the end, you know, he, we know he's got a job to do. I liked and... the ending that he's out there, you know, watching everybody else kind of be happy and knowing that he's never, because, I mean, the, the man he loves is obviously he, yeah, the he, worst dude and. He has to give up his love, and he has to, has to yeah, hunt him it, down for the... It is a bitter... I like the bittersweet kind of ending there for him. Because we know... Obviously, we know where he's going to be Harry Potter, and he's going to go on to do great things, and, and so on. But, yeah, it's kind of sad to see him out there knowing he's never going to find love, I suppose. 
No, it's well, it's never been written about in the books that he ever found found love after that. Yeah, found love again, I should say not. Mm-hmm. No, but I thought that was a good ending. I I don't I like those kind of bittersweet endings like that. Those Star Warsy endings where mm-hmm. you know some some melancholy in there, if you will. All right, so the, we have to do the hammer scale. Oh yes, one to ten hammers. One to ten hammers. I will I will let you go first. Ooh, I got to think about this one. I mean, like I said, I it's not that I dislike it. I I enjoy it, but it's there's just something that feels off about it. That something is missing when you compare it to the Harry Potter films. And again, this is coming from somebody who doesn't know the lore, who has only seen the movies, and every now and then you will tell me things or explain things to me. It just, they miss something with me. And I don't think that they're bad. I'm going to go seven hammers. Sure, seven hammers. It feels six. really high for what you just said. I, I, I guess, I, yeah, probably six and a half. I'm, I'll drop down to a six and a half. I, I, I mean, I enjoy it. I, it's not that I don't enjoy it. It's just, I mean, I would give all the Harry Potter movies you know, much higher scores than that. Yeah, your scale seems like you need like a 1 to 50 scale or something so you can get more accurate with your numbers. Honestly, I thought you'd give it closer to a 5. Well, it's a six and a half. I don't know. It's not the, Like I said, it's not that I don't like it. I, I can mm-hmm. enjoy the films, but I think I'm missing something. And I don't know if that's because I don't know everything or because there's something to be missed. <laughs> For me, I will give it... Oh, I'm going to give it a 7 and a half. Okay. Exhibition sometimes ran long, and sometimes the story got very confusing. It was but pretty slow. But the magic and the wonder that was there was beautiful. I it really is... loved Lolly. I thought she was a I wonderful felt like she addition. Was the she was the Tina she replacement. Was, she was whimsical and fun. Yeah. I uh, anytime Newt is on the screen, it's it's gold. He's the one who you watch to bring the magic and the wonder in. Yeah. Every time. Well, the every first time movie was all screen, these different beautiful. creatures, and I, you know, the first even one him I... in the crab dance. <laughs> A little strange, but yeah. Oh, uh, no, I'm definitely going to go seven and a half. There was, there's much to be happy about. We finally found a Grindelwald that works. Hooray. <laughs> but no, I, I think you bring up, there was a lot of exposition in this and a lot of slow points as well. Mm-hmm. So. If it wasn't for that, I would rate it higher. But it was like they almost had to keep re-upping and changing the story because things get to, got too convoluted amongst the last two movies. They got convoluted here too, I would say. That's what I'm, my kind of my point is that there is no like central story in each of these films. They're just kind of this strange the first continuation. Is just that Grindelwald is out there somewhere and he's doing something, but he was, we didn't even know well, that until the, the very end. Exactly. And... See, the, the fir- that's a good example of what I'm talking about. Like, the first film felt like an actual, there was a story about Newt going to, you know, he's looking for these creatures or whatever he was doing in the movie. He's going to New York, then he gets in trouble, and there's a creature on the loose that he might have to. Yeah, Grindelwald wasn't even like that. He was there. We he was the hear about him. Yeah. yeah, but we didn't know that that was going to be like the kind of the point of the film that's going to launch into these. These the, the next two that were like just yeah. like let's drag this story on. Well, the a little second bit more. one is Grindelwald escapes and he's just running amok and he wants credence because he thinks credence is powerful. Yeah. Third movie, he decides I'm going to take over the Wizarding World through politics. Mm, yes, Palpatine, this thing. <laughs> Because then no one would stand against him, I guess. I, I guess. But Though the Order of the Phoenix still would. Yeah. Well, it would probably be the first founding then instead of the founding that happens when Voldemort goes live the first time. <laughs> We're live with Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> but no, all right. So I'm going to stick with my six and a half and you give it seven and a half hammers? Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's all we got for you this time. Now your turn. Take to the comments below. How many hammers would you give this? One to ten? Or just what did you think of the film? And what do you think about the the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them kind of franchise? Does it fit with the Harry Potter films? Let us know all that in the comments below. And until next time, thanks for watching.